problems with religious liberty. And so our story today is about one of those Bible heroes. Our text today comes from Acts. And Peter and John have been brought before the authorities and told not to speak about Jesus. And Peter answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Amen. Well, our country recently has gone through a change. Well, many, many years ago, there was another change of government. But this time, way back then, they didn't do it peacefully. This one country attacked the capital city, and they were winning. They were taking this capital city down. It was going to fail. And in one of the rooms near the palace, there was our hero, and he was praying, not just for himself, because he knew that when these things happened back then, the kings, all the leaders got killed. He wasn't praying for himself. He was praying that God would be with his people who were captive, and that he would answer the prayers and would deliver them back to their old home when the time was nearly up. But it hadn't happened yet. Just as he finished his prayers and had stood up, crash, the door was banged open. Two soldiers came in with their swords and their captain behind them. And the captain said, oh, hold off. This man, the king wants to deal with him by himself. He wants to take care of this. Don't hurt him or else the king will get us all torn up. We'll be torn to pieces. So they quickly bound him with ropes and dragged the prisoner off. They went to the palace and then this big banquet room where not too long ago there had been a big party going on, but now the chairs were turned over, food and stuff was on the floor. And at one end there was the king, the new king, talking to his generals. And all around him were his heads of state the princes. And they were all looking forward to getting this new kingdom and getting lots and lots of money for it. Well, the king, then they looked and they saw the prisoner being brought up. He was the third highest in the kingdom. He'd just been appointed. And they said, oh, we know what's going to happen to him. And sure enough, he was brought before the king. And the king said, oh, I know all about you. My spies have been telling me how that you have been running this kingdom so well, Ned. I'm going to make you first in the kingdom, just behind me, and have responsibilities. There was a gasp of the princes. They couldn't believe it. It's just like if nowadays if President Biden asked Ms. Harris to be stepped down and put in the former Vice President Pence to be in charge. You can imagine what happened. They were upset. And the king looked at them and they silenced down immediately. He said, you guys can wrap your business. I'm going to take Delta Shazer, and he's coming with me now, and we're going to I have lots of questions to talk with him about. And so they went and talked. Well, a short time later, the princes were out in the gardens by the palace looking up, and they were upset. Oh, things had not gone the way they had liked. They said, well, uh, Belteshazzar, he has this nice mansion next to the palace, and, and he doesn't throw any big parties in that. And oh my, uh, one of the main princes said, I worked it out with this man to provide food for all the, the palace and that. I was going to make lots of extra money. And Belteshazzar called me in and told me, no, you don't get any extra money. We're throwing that out. And well, my wife was upset because we were planning to buy a new house. And another man said, yes, I collect taxes. And of course, we give the $100 that the, the king wants, but I have got an extra $25. And Dr. Scherzer got me in. And he told me he, I couldn't do that at all. And he even sends guards with me now. So then I go to collect taxes. I don't collect too much. And my, I can buy my son a, a new chariot or my daughter a pony. I mean, this is really bad. And, the, and somebody said, oh, look at the sundial. We know what time it is. And sure enough, at that time, the shutters of this one mansion opened, and there was Dr. Satcher. He was 
praying toward the east, toward Jerusalem. And somebody says, why is he doing that? It's a wreck over there. I've been there. There's nothing left. And that's just really bad. But he does it. And then one of the first princes, I've got an idea how we can change this. Oh. And he talked to the other princes. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, be quiet. Here comes Belteshazzar. It's time to go in and see the king. Make sure he doesn't find out about this or he'll, he'll make something up. The next morning, early, early, earlier than the princes usually came, they came to the king. And the king put out his scepter so they could come in. And he said, well, what do you got princes up so early for? What's going on? Oh, king, we have something special. You know how we conquered this kingdom and everything is kind of an uproar. I mean, people, all these that nations we've conquered, they serve out for gods, and, and just, you know, things are just, I mean, they're getting better, um, you, you know, but there's still a problem now. And we're just really worried that maybe if there's some climate disaster or something, we won't be able to get them to help dig, dig new canals, or maybe there'll be something that comes along, perhaps a plague or something, and, and they won't obey us when we tell them that they can't go to their temples and do other things. It's just going to be a disaster, and we've got an idea. Now, we know that other lands, they have their kings or their gods. And I know that we here usually don't do that, but we've talked to the priests, and they say it would be okay for you to be the god for 30 days. Oh, the king, well, hey, that's pretty good. I would really like that. But uh, uh, where's Belteshazzar? I'd like to go over this with you. Oh, well, uh, the first prince said, ah, uh, you know, he's so busy in that. In fact, this whole thing uh, came about because of him. I mean, this is all about him. I'm sure, that, you know, don't worry about that. And King said, oh, okay. And he signed the document. And then he said, well, oh, yes, okay. And they all bowed down to him. And now you go out, do your business. And the first prince it said to the second prince, they're going to walk away. Come with me. We're going to see Belteshazzar and make sure he gets a copy of this document. And so again, they walked down the hall and they got to door and the scribe was there out front and said, you can't go in, he's busy. Oh, we can go in. And they went in and they said, Belshazzar, and he said, what are you guys doing here so early? Well, the king had this over. I didn't hear anything about it. Well, maybe the messenger didn't get you. And he said, here's this new document. You don't, you can read it at your pleasure, but what it says, if anybody worships anybody else, during the next 30 days, they're going to be all torn up. Kind of smiled and he said, We'll be watching you. And away they went. And the scribe came in, he said, Well, we're Hebrews. What are we, what are we going to do? Uh, what are we going to do? And Belshazzar just looked at him and the scribe said, Okay. And he went back, I know I need to get back to work. And he did. Well, later that day, it was time. And the princes had to get it all out of that courtyard, and they were looking up at where Belshazzar's window was. And one of them said, well, he's smart. He won't come out and pray. I mean, he'll just do it secretly. But the head prince said, ah, it doesn't matter. We've got spies there. We'll check it out. And look, there's a sundial. It's about time. And sure enough, the doors the, uh, opened to the window. And there was Belshazzar praying. Arrest him, the head prince called to the guard. Go arrest that man, that prince. And the, he's, and the guard says, what? That's Belshazzar. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He's breaking the law. And he went up and arrested him. And a few minutes later, they were dragging him in. And the princes appeared before the king. And they said, oh, king, someone up a powerful person was not obeying your laws, and we know that other people, if they saw him, they saw him, there would be riots in the streets, they would be burning buildings, all kinds of terrible things would happen. And the king said, Yes, yes, we need a person getting words to help chance if I could talk to him. And then they brought him up. And he was he was the one they brought him. And the king turned pale, oh no, it was Belshazzar, his friend. What can he do? And the princess says, oh, your laws can't be changed. Well, the king says, hey, to the guards, take him over to this room over next year and make sure he has plenty of food and drink. And, and you princess, you get out and scribes, bring my warriors in. We're going to check. And the, they checked. And they went over the papers. But 
the lawyers couldn't find any out. And late that evening, the princess came back and they said, you know what the law says? And the king said, yes. And in the distance behind the palace, they could hear, roar, roar. Um, so they started off with no chance. Behind the palace, there was a lion stand and the two lion's keepers were, were there and roar, roar, roar. The lions, the one keeper said, well, how come we haven't been feeding them? They're, I mean, they're hungry. They're hungry. Well, the big prince, first prince, he said, don't feed them today. I've got something special for them to eat. Oh, okay. Roar, roar, roar. They kept roaring. I just would, I just, they're our babies. We, I mean, we just would look after them. And then they're so hungry. Roar, roar, roar. Well, oh, here comes the king. And look who's with him. All the princes and the head people are with him and the guards and they were coming. What said the one uh, line keeper to the other? Kneel down. Remember the king is our God today. They knelt down and the king came down and you could tell that he was sad. There was tears in his eyes. The princes were smiling and felt Sazer was calm. The princes, uh, the, uh, <coughs> The lion keeper says, what should we do? And the, and the king says, Belshazzar is put into the lion's den. Roar, roar, roar. And, the, and he calmly, they said, oh, they wouldn't want to do it, but they did. And he went, roar, roar. And everything was quiet. They didn't hear a sound. And the king says, what, what happened? Lion keeper said, Well, when the lions are eating, they don't roar. <gasps> the king had rolled a stone, put my seal on it, make sure that nobody goes in. And he said, The princess, you in the princess, you can go. And the princess, hey, do you want to come to our party tonight, King? The king said, No, no. And the princess went off to their party. And the king went to his castle. And you know what? He couldn't sleep. He was so worried about his friend. Now, he'd been really politically correct and had always called him Belshazzar and had not called him by his Hebrew name. But he was, uh, his butler said, hey, can we help you? Could, maybe the musicians, they're just outside, they could play some songs to help you rest. Or look at all this good food and drink we have over here. No, the king, I'm just so upset. You know, Belshazzar talked to me. He talked to me about his God in all way and how his God protected him. Father said, well, they didn't protect him very good because their, their main town, Jerusalem, it's a ruins then. Well, he said, no, Shazza told me that that's because they hadn't made their God. Their God let this happen to him. But he's a powerful God. But we will, we'll see, won't we? And the father said, well, look, the sun is coming up. I can see the light of God in the sky. And, oh, the king said, yes, but... You know, usually the Ryans roared through sometimes during the night, and they hadn't roared at all this night. Let's go down. And so they went down to the lion's den. It was quiet. The two keepers with their guard. The stone was still there. The king said, roll away the stone. And they did. And the king said, Bell, Daniel, Daniel, can you, has your God been able to protect you? From deep down the lion's den, yes, king, my God has been able to protect me and shut the lion's mouths. And they didn't hurt me. And just then the princes were coming. And the king says, Get Daniel out. And they got Daniel out. And then suddenly, roar, roar, roar. And the king says, Put these princes in there. And the lions were quiet again. The Lord had protected Daniel. And because he had made the right so with your mommies and daddies will help you to make the right choices. Let's have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to be with us and to help us to make the right choices. And as the song, children's song says, dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose true, dare to make it all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.